Hi there, welcome once again to the Dukascopic TV studio. I'm Ben Jones. Alongside me for part one of his interview looking at shipping and the marine environment is Carl Gustaf London. Carl, thank you very much for joining us today. My pleasure to be here. So if you can begin by discussing some of the more recent developments, some of the more major developments in the shipping industry at the moment. So overall, we've seen a steady growth of shipping over the years. And we have some minor declines in a recession, but overall, every year there's more and more shipping going on. And that's also then presented certain types of, of problems. So in, in some places, we actually have uh, too much traffic, like the Panama Canal. So what we're seeing right now is uh, an expansion of the Panama Canal, which is obviously going to have some significant impacts. On top of that, there's a new project also to build a canal through Lake Nicaragua, through Nicaragua. Now, those two together are you know, large infrastructure projects that will really have big impact, but also will alleviate um, the, the, the sort of shortages that we have in terms of transportation between the Atlantic and the Pacific. Beyond that, uh, looking at uh, the Arctic, there are new the Northwest and the Northeast Passage is now being discussed much more actively. And in fact, there are some significant amounts of traffic already going through. A lot of ships are being built and designed so that they can take this Arctic route. Um, and of course, this shortens the trip between the Atlantic and the Pacific considerably. So it's a huge economic saving, which of course also is a, a great uh, environment gain in the sense that we're not going to spend as much energy shipping things across. However, there's some significant risks associated with that also. So um, those are the typical type of infrastructure investments that are going to change uh, the way shipping operates and the types of dynamics we have in the marine environment. Okay, now you mentioned these environmental risks. Can you elaborate on these and how they're being approached, how, how they're trying to be solved really? So one big issue that we've had is uh, when you open up uh, routes uh, that sort of have been closed for long periods of time, you risk introducing things. So in the Caribbean, for example, we've seen a massive decline of coral reefs over the last 40 years. About 40 years ago, we were at 60-70% corals on the reefs. Today, we're maybe at 14 on average, but some reefs are even below 10. Uh, in all likelihood, there's been several disease introductions associated with the canal. So already in the 50s and 60s, we, we speculate that we think we had some diseases that hit the corals. And in the early 80s, we saw the sea urgences, which is one of the main grazers, uh, be wiped out across the entire Caribbean. In all likelihood, this was a disease that came in through the canal. We actually have some of the first diseased uh, sea urgences found off the entrance of the canal. So that is one very significant type of problem. Um, we also see uh, macro introductions of various sorts. They can be on the hull of the ship or they can be on ballast water and so on. And, and they can also have significant impacts, particularly in disturbed environments where we've already wrecked it in some ways. Uh, this is sort of the, the last nail in the coffin. We, we get the cockroaches, we get the, the rats uh, of the sea across and they actually have a really negative impact. Okay, and finally, can you compare for us shipping and pipelines, uh, the positives and negatives of both. Does one stand out as the safer option? So maybe before I get to that, I wanted to also say another environmental impact, which is quite significant, is uh, the one associated with accidents. Now, we've all heard about oil spills, and you know, a lot of us think about you know, those being huge environmental problems. And, and no doubt, particularly in temperate waters, this tends to be a, a very big issue. So of course, when we're opening up Arctic shipping, this is number one on the list of things that we're very concerned about. Um, what we can have here is environments that will take decades, in some cases probably centuries, to recover from an oil spill. So there's every reason to believe that those type of high-risk cargoes should be you know, considered uh, even more thoroughly than, for example, if you're a shipping machinery or bulk carrier of some sort, which is sort of quite benign in, in an Arctic environment. Uh, the other factor is that when you have a uh, safety situation for the crew. Obviously, in an Arctic environment, this is a very tough proposition to rescue people. Uh, you will probably make a, a number of other things that are associated with that that could be quite damaging uh, to the environment as well. And mobilizing resources uh, can be very costly. And thirdly, I would say that the Arctic shipping routes um, so far, I think um, we don't have enough information about all the different aspects. For example, we don't have networks of protection uh, we need to do some more work on the routing, exactly where should they go. 
We probably need dynamic systems because the ice will be very different between years, which means that you, know, you have to have a regulatory environment which is very adaptable to the actual conditions. So rather than blanket say you can't do it, our recommendation is be much more sophisticated in terms of how you regulate this and work closely with industry, but also make sure they're accountable so they know the risks and if they actually have accidents, it's really their responsibility. So they don't pass on this to someone else, they take the risk and they are responsible for it. And I think if you look at the big Arctic nations, uh, they are all very aware of the uh, risk, but they're also very keen to get this going because it opens up other aspects of their economy. So I think that is a, another angle that people tend to forget. Okay, and with the pipelines compared to the shipping, what's, what's, the, uh, what's the options with these? So in a number of uh, oceans, for example, the Baltic or the Black Sea and parts of the Mediterranean, we're now having situations where we're constructing major pipelines for gas, for oil. Uh, one of the interesting aspects here, of course, is that risk factors are, are very different in a pipeline versus a shipping situation. As an environment movement, I think a lot of us have been very skeptical about pipelines. We're concerned with the risks that are associated with it. We often think that, you know, they might not be well managed and so on. I think it's fair to say that anyone who goes in and puts the trouble of, of putting a pipeline in will be very conscious of all the risks. Um, and of course, that's the, you know, the whole purpose of having something there. Um, so I, I think if it's well designed and well maintained, um, it should be a pretty safe method. I mean, you can transport vastly larger quantities through a pipeline than compared to ships. Now, the big uh, advantage with ships, of course, is if the environmental conditions change, uh, ships are much more adaptable, so you know, you're know you not stuck with infrastructure which you can't use or which you're forced to use under the wrong type of conditions. So that can obviously be an advantage. Uh, the other thing with um, the pipeline, which can be a risk, of course, is if someone you know, in a war situation or some, some sort of uh, terrorism or whatever it is, you're a very easy target. I mean, it's sort of impossible to miss a pipeline, whereas I think ships, you have a little bit better ability to defend or to move them in places where the risk factors are less. Having said that, looking at wars, obviously a lot of ships have been sunk, so it's, there's no guarantee there either. But uh, I think if in, in balance, I would say for certain types of uh, transportation, particularly where there's a hazardous cargo like uh, petrochemicals, you probably are better off with a pipeline because the, the number of risk situations is much less. And with the expansion now, for example, in Europe of wind farms, you know, the risk to uh, navigation due to these is considerably higher. So if you have bad uh, weather, if you're in a situation where you lose control of your ship, running into a wind farm is, is really not a good proposition. So that is now coming up as, as a new threat also to shipping, whereas that wouldn't be a risk for the uh, pipelines. Fantastic. Carl, once again, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Carl Gustaf will be back for the second part of his interview, so make sure you keep clicking back to Dukascopy TV. Bye for now.